Hey Internet, this time I'm going to do another NES game. Uh, this one is Shadowgate. I originally picked up this game, honestly, because I thought the cover looked really cool. Which, let's be honest, that's how most of us bought games when we were kids. Well, we didn't buy shit, but that's how we got games. And I found out, actually, as a kid, this game confused the fuck out of me. But as I got older and played it more, it's a point-and-click adventure. And it's hard as hell, but it's awesome. Sword. Okay, so I suppose you want more detail than it's awesome. So let me get into this. Uh, first off, like I said, it's a point and click adventure. So basically, you have a screen, you go through each of the rooms, solving puzzles and stuff along the way, trying to figure out how to get to the end of Shadowgate, which is this castle that you're in. Uh, right off the bat, you're in the entrance, there's a door, and you don't really get a lot of direction. It just says, hey, go to it. Uh, one of the first things you'll eventually notice is you can actually open the skull above the door, there's a key in it, etc. Uh, but it's really good. There's a lot of good puzzles here. You really have to think outside the box and try everything to see what works and what doesn't. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's not immediately evident that's really kind of cool. It, it definitely gives you a good challenge. I know there's speed runs online. Um, they're tool assisted, so it's lame and it doesn't count anyway. But there are people that can burn through the whole game in a matter of minutes. But that's someone who, A, like I said, is cheating and using tools and ROMs and emulators and all that shit. And B, they've played the game a million times and memorized everything. Uh, for the regular Joe, it's a lot more fun because it takes more time and you're kind of involved. And uh, you will die a lot. Um, this game is merciless. There are a million ways to die in this game. And you will probably experience all of them, some of them twice. Uh, the one benefit to that is that the Game Over Death Grim Reaper music is actually amazing. So you don't mind so much that you died. I know the first couple times I do it, I generally just sit there and let the music play for a minute first because it's kind of awesome. In fact, in the background right now, that's probably what you hear. If it's not, then I'm doing a shitty job at editing. Also, aside from the Game Over music, all the music in this is just astounding. Like, easily in my top three game soundtracks ever. Right alongside Dragon Warrior and Castlevania 2, which I know people hate the game, but the soundtrack was just epic. Another thing you have to remember in the game is you have torches, and if they both go out, it's too dark for you to see, and you die. So you have to pay attention to those. Luckily, the music, wherever you are, because it varies in rooms, will change to a very recognizable, more up-tempo, kind of suspenseful thing, when your torches are getting low. That's to remind you that, hey, you're gonna die soon, you might want to do something about this. But yeah, um, overall, it's just a really, really good game. I know, it, it's a lesser known one. I don't know that a lot of people have played it or heard of it. Uh, as a kid, I had it, but I don't know if any of my friends really did. I, I think it was more for adults, but in a time when adults weren't really playing video games yet. So, I don't know if it hit its market when it came out, but going back and playing it now, it's an amazing game. Also, Nintendo is a giant disappointment because they have never released this since that I'm aware of. There was, like, a Shadowgate 64 game that was ass, but, like, this game itself, uh, being a point-and-click adventure, would have been perfect to be re-released on the Virtual Console for either the Wii, which has point-and-click controls, or the 3DS or Wii U, which have touchscreens that go perfectly with point and click. Uh, so they had every opportunity and the perfect hardware to do it, but never released the game for some reason. So if you want to play it, you either have to do the shitty illegal thing and to get ROMs, or actually go out and find a copy and play it legit on a console. Luckily, like with the Retron 5 I talked about a while ago, it's really easy to play NES games now. And like I said, this wasn't hugely popular, so you can probably pick it up fairly cheap. I think even the inbox version here cost me maybe 10 bucks. So you're not going to break the bank with this one. If you want cart only, at most 5 bucks. So there you go. It's a great game. Highly recommended. Um, on a console that had not many point and clicks that I can think of, this was definitely the best one. 
Uh, hell, this is probably the best one I've played to date. So, yeah, give it a go. Also, this might be my last video for a little while. I might do one more. I have a PC game someone recommended that I'm probably going to do just so I don't be a disappointment to people. That was bad grammar. Um, but then after that, I'm actually in the process of moving. So I have to start packing all this shit up. So that would make my video very not entertaining because I would have no games to play and no backdrop to film on. So yeah, I'll be out of commission for like a month or something. I don't know, whenever. And then I'll come back to making these videos that no one watches. So, yay for that! <laughs>